Hi everyone. Today is the eighth lesson of our series, The History of Redemption. And the title of my sharing is Abraham. I'll be referencing from the History of Redemption series, book one, the Genesis genealogies, from chapter 11, part 20, from chapter 13, part two, and chapter 14. Since the beginning, after the fall of Adam, God has planned his redemptive work for the coming of the seed of the woman to crush the head of the serpent as stated in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. This is the proto-gospel. Genesis chapter 3, verse 15 says, I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and her offspring. He shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. So far, we have learned about Adam, the first man, and then the line of Cain and the line of Seth. If you notice one thing, that is God has been focusing on separation. Yes, separation means to set apart from the world by adhering to the word of God. The flow of the lineage from Seth until Abraham, we can sum up as a process of God calling out his chosen people from this world in order to set them apart. Through this work of separation, God is preserving his godly lineage to prepare for the coming of the Messiah, which is the seed of the woman. When one is set apart from this world by adhering to the word of God, one attain holiness. Holiness is very important for our saints today because without holiness, no one can see the Lord. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14 says, Strive for peace with everyone and for the holiness without which no one will see the Lord. So, the work of separation is very important. However, this work of separation is always accompanied by pain and it's definitely not an easy thing to do. Through Abraham's life, which we will study today, we will see God's grace and how God set him apart from this world by adhering to the word of God. Because of his obedience to God, he became the father of faith. And as a result, he received great blessing. And he became the starting point of a new era. So what is the starting point of this new era? Abraham became the first gateway through which the Messiah would come. He became the starting point for the salvations of all nations. God said in Genesis chapter 22, verse 18, And in your offspring shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because you have obeyed my voice. This offspring, in singular form, is referring to our Messiah, Jesus Christ. This is why Jesus, our Messiah, his genealogy began with Abraham. Matthew chapter 1, verse 1 records this. The book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. There were four crucial levels of separation in Abraham's life. These four levels represent the different levels of Christian faith. We who want to remain as remnants till the end, we must also go through these four levels of separation to mature our faith. Before we go into the four levels of separation, let us look at the background of Abraham first. Abraham, his original name was Abraham, meaning exalted father, honorable father. When he was 99 years old, God changed his name to Abraham, meaning father of the multitudes, father of nations. So why did God change his name? And how was it possible for Abraham to become the father of multitudes, father of nations? The answer is in Galatians chapter 3, verse 29. Galatians chapter 3, verse 29 says, And if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, as according to promise. After the coming of Jesus Christ, Abraham's fatherhood expanded to include all those who believe in Jesus Christ. So all Christians throughout the world, we became the spiritual Jews and the descendants of Abraham. Next, we can see 
Abraham's father is Terah. According to Genesis chapter 11, verse 26, Terah actually had three sons. They are Haran, Abraham, and Nahor. Okay? And over here, you can see Lot. Lot is the son of Haran. So Lot is Abraham's nephew. We will hear about this character later on as well. Okay. Now over here, we can see Abraham had two sons. The first one is Ishmael, whom he had it through Hagar, the maidservant of Sarah. Okay. He had Ishmael at the age of 86 years old. And this is recorded in Genesis chapter 16, verse 16. Then he had another son, which is the covenanter son, Isaac, through his wife, Sarah. Okay. He had Isaac when he was 100 years old. This is recorded in Genesis chapter 21, verse 5. Knowing this background, now let us study the four separations in Abraham's life. As I mentioned earlier, these four levels of separation represent the different levels of Christian faith. So let's go. The first separation, there are two main points to it. First is separation from his homeland and kindred, and second, separation from his father, Terah. God called Abraham twice. Right? These two callings by God were organized and presented for the first time in history by the author of the History of Redemption series book, Reverend Abraham Park. The first calling came in Ur of the Chaldeans, and the second calling came in Haran. Now let us look at it. Okay, in Ur of the Chaldeans, this is where Abraham was born. So this is his homeland. Ur of Akkadians was the center of idolatry. Okay. Idol worshipping was prevalent during Abraham's time. To make it worse, Abraham's own father, Terah, he was more absorbed in worshipping idols than worshipping the true God. So this was the environment in which Abraham was brought up. Joshua chapter 24 verse 2 says, And Joshua said to all the people, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Long ago, your fathers lived beyond the Euphrates, Terah, the father of Abraham and of Nahor, and they served other gods. As we know, we mankind are easily influenced by our surrounding and by our family members. Our God, who is a faithful God, He is not going to just sit back and not do anything to ensure His godly line continues. He must fulfill his work of redemption to prepare the path for the coming of the Messiah, which is the seed of the woman. Therefore, our God of glory, he appeared to Abraham and commanded him to leave this homeland, Ur of the Chaldeans. So in Acts chapter 7, verse 2 to 3, we can see God's command to Abraham, and that is, go out from your land and from your kindred. He heard about this command from Abraham, and he actively led his family out of Ur of the Chaldeans, as recorded in Genesis chapter 11, verse 31. It says, Terah took Abraham his son, and Lot the son of Haran, his grandson, and Sarai his daughter-in-law, his sons Abraham's wife, and they went forth together from Ur of the Chaldeans to go into the land of Canaan. But when they came to Haran, they settled there. of the Chaldeans symbolizes the sinful world. So Abraham's departure from his homeland, Ur of the Chaldeans, represent the first step in faith for Christian, which is separation from the world. However, as we read earlier on, we know they settled in Haran before they reached the final destination, the land of Canaan. The land of Canaan symbolizes the kingdom of heaven. Haran was one of the magnificent cities of Padan Aram, located north region of Mesopotamia. Many people from the line of Shem were actually living around that area. Eber, he established the kingdom of Ebla in Aleppo. Okay. In the map over here, I have circled Haran and Aleppo in green. So you can see they are very near to each other. Therefore, when Terah and 
Abraham were living in Haran, they could probably catch up with many of their relatives over there in that area, right? And we also learned in last lesson too that Abraham lived contemporaneously with Noah for 58 years. Thus, if Noah, a man of faith, he had migrated with Abel at a time during the construction of Tower of Babel and lived near Haran. And Abraham, who left Ur of the Chaldeans before he turned 58 years old, the two of them could have met. Then, when they have met, Abraham would have received the full story of the flood account about Noah from Noah himself when they stayed in Haran. Noah's faith could have positive influence on Abraham, and this allowed him to leave for Canaan when God called him again. The name of the place Haran means desolate. Haran at that time was a hub of commerce and culture, and that may be the reason why many of the kindreds were living nearby, because it was such a nice city to stay in. Terra was reluctant to move on, so he settled down in Haran. Because of his settling down, Abraham, who was a filial child, he, it became difficult for him to leave his father behind and continue his journey to the land of Canaan. Therefore, just as the meaning of Terah's name, to stay, to de delay, Terah, he delayed Abraham in obeying God's command to go to Canaan. So Terah, he was a man who followed his faith and, his, and was separated from the world. But he is a representative of a person who was unable to go to heaven. He never continued till the end. So, may we all not give up like Tara. Let, let, let us not stop halfway, but let us continue this journey of faith till the end, till we reach the land of Canaan, which is the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Because of Terah holding Abraham back, God has to call Abraham the second time. So this time he was in Haran. Okay, this is recorded in Genesis chapter 12, verse 1. It says, Now the Lord said to Abraham, Go from your father and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. So we can see this time round, God added an extra phrase, which is, From your father's house. Why? Because God knew the reason why Abraham did not move on was because of his father, Terah. Terah delayed him. Thus, God has to command him to leave his father's house. Genesis chapter 12, verse 4 tells us that Abraham was 75 years old when he departed from Haran. So, when he was 75 years old, was his father, Terah, still alive? If Terah was dead, Maybe it is easier for him to move on. As we know, Abraham is a filial child, right? Yeah. So let's find out, was Terah still alive? In Acts chapter 7, verse 4, Deacon Stephen addressed that Abraham left Haran after Terah died. So does this mean Terah was physically dead when Abraham left Haran? Let us check it out with some numbers recorded in Genesis chapter 11 about Terah. In Genesis chapter 11, verse 26, it says, When Terah had lived 70 years, he fathered Abram, Nahor, and Haran. So that means when Abram was born, Terah was 70 years old. And as we read earlier on, we know that Abraham departed from Haran at the age of 75 years old. So when he departed, Terah would be 75 plus 70, and that gives us 145. So Terah was 145 years old when Abraham departed from Haran. But in Genesis chapter 11, verse 32, it tells us that the days of Terah were 205 years and Terah died in Haran. So we know clearly that Terah was physically still alive when Abraham left Haran. Hmm. So is there an error or a mistake made by Deacon Stephen? Okay, the answer is no. 
Okay, we need to look back at the original language. The book of Acts is recorded in the New Testament, and the New Testament is written in Greek. So let us study some Greek words together. Okay? Two different words, uh, two different Greek words were used to describe the word died. Okay, in Acts chapter 7 itself, which uh, is the speech of Deacon Stephen. Okay, the two Greek words are apothenesco and telutau. Okay, in Acts chapter 7 verse 4, uh, over here, it describes Terah's death, as he said, and after his father died, referring to Terah, the word died here in Greek is apothenesco. Okay? Then, Later on, in the later verse, in verse 15, Deacon Stephen addressed about Jacob. So in this verse, it says, and Jacob went down into Egypt and he died, he and our fathers. The word died here is telotau in Greek. So why did Deacon Stephen use two different Greek words in the same chapter in his speech? Let's examine further. The word Apothenesco in Greek was also used in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 31, where Apostle Paul confessed that he died daily. Let me ask you, is it pos possible for Apostle Paul to die physically every day? No, right? Yes. So this over here, it is used in a figurative sense. Therefore, the word Apothenesco can be used to describe both the literal death or to be used figuratively. As we have seen through the numbers in Genesis 11 just now, we know that Terah was physically still alive when, Terah, uh, when Abraham departed from Haran. So, Deacon Stephen, in his message in Acts chapter 7, verse 14, the word die, Apotonesco was used in the figurative sense. His message was that all influence from Terah on Abraham that hindered him from leaving Haran was killed in Abraham's heart. So Abraham, he could overcome, he overcome this pain and followed the word of God. Okay? And God promised Abraham that if he's able to obey and depart from Haran and move on to Canaan, God will give him a great blessing. And this is recorded in Genesis chapter 12, verse 2 to 3. It says, And I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great, so that you will be, you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and him who dishonors you I will curse, and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So God will make Abraham a source of blessing if he obey to depart from Haran and go to the land of Canaan. So today, do you want to become a source of blessing too? I believe all of us want to become a source of blessing. So let us pray to have such great faith like Abraham so that we can cut off all terror in our life by faith and be able to go at God's command. So now, let us look at the second separation. The second separation is separation from Lot. Genesis chapter 13 tells us that both Abraham and Lot, they had a lot of possession. And at that time, the land could not support them. So therefore, they have to separate. Loving Lot greatly, Abraham let Lot choose first the area he would like to go. Being a man with worldly greed, Lot he symbolizes earthly desire. Genesis chapter 13, verse 10 to 11 reveals that Lot had possessed circular greed. Genesis chapter 13 to 11 says, And Lot lifted up his eyes and saw that the Jordan Valley was well watered everywhere like the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt in the direction of Zoar. This was before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. So Lot chose for himself all the Jordan Valley and Lot journeyed east. Thus, they separated from each other. Yes, so we can see Lot, he chose the valley of Jordan because it was well watered everywhere all the way to the land of Zohar, and he moved his tents as far as Sodom. However, we know that Sodom later became a city of immorality and was destroyed by God. 
In contrary, Abraham, he remained in Canaan, the land of God's promise. He held on to God's will, and as a result, he received the blessing as recorded in Genesis chapter 13, verse 14 to 15. Genesis chapter 13, verse 14 to 15 says, The Lord said to Abraham, After the Lord has separated from him, lift up your eyes and look from the place where you are, northward, southward, eastward, and westward. For all the land that you see, I will give to you and to your offspring forever. Yes, God will give to him and his descendants all the land that he could see. What a great blessing he had received by holding on to God's will. To Abraham, Lord, his nephew, is very dear. Lord has gone through a lot with him. They left Ur of the Chaldeans together. They sojourned this journey together and all the way to Canaan. Lot was the only kindred he had during this difficult time. So this separation must be very heartbreaking for Abraham. However, only those who overcome the pain of separation can become the true disciples of Jesus. Jesus said in Luke chapter 14, verse 33, So therefore, any one of you who does not renounce all that he has cannot be my disciple. Thus, we can only become true disciples of Jesus Christ when we can cut our ties with the secular and materialistic things of this world. We often hear the phrase, you know, the grass is greener on the other side. Yes, there are many temptations out there in this world that will lure us away. But we saints need to keep our focus on our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us not lose sight of Him. Amen. The third separation is separation from Ishmael. As I shared earlier on in the background, Ishmael was born to Abraham when he was 86 years old. This was true Hagar, which is the maidservant of Sarah. The question over here is, Abraham has a wife, Sarah. So why did he have a son then through Hagar? This is because when Abraham was 75 years old, he received the promise from God that he would be made into a great nation. After that, he left Haran, went into Canaan, and he waited for 10 years. God showed Abraham also the stars in heaven and said to him, so shall your descendants be. We, you can find this account in Genesis chapter 15 and 16. Then after that, God also gave the covenant of the torch and ratified it. Up to this point, Sarah is very old already, and she is barren. So how? How to have kids, you know? And then God promised Abraham, the stars in the heaven, look at it, and this shall all your descendants be the number, right? So how? So Sarah, she started to use human thoughts to solve and try to fulfill God's will, all right? So she pushed Hagar, her maidservant, to Abraham to conceive a child. Abraham, instead of believing God will give him a son through his wife, he listened to Sarah and used human effort and scheme to get a child, thinking that that will accomplish God's promise. So in Genesis chapter 16, verse 2 says, And Sarai said to Abraham, Behold, now the Lord has prevented me from bearing children. Go into my servant. It may be that I shall obtain children by her. And Abraham listened to the voice of Sarah. Do you know what? This brought great calamity upon Abraham's family. When Hagar saw that she had conceived, she despised her master, Sarah, and Sarah in turn treated her very harshly. And we know the son, Ishmael, he became the ancestors of the Arabs who are fighting against the Jews in the Middle East even till today. Then after Isaac, the covenanter's son, was born and win, God commanded Abraham to drive out Ishmael. Okay, weaning of babies, that is to stop feeding uh, with the breast milk, okay, normally occur when the baby is around two to four years old. Okay, so after Isaac was weaned, Ishmael was probably around maybe 17 years old. So imagine Abraham had spent 17 years with his son Ishmael. He had this son at quite an old age as well. 
So can you imagine how much love he had for Ishmael? It is definitely and really, really, really difficult okay, for him to drive his son out. Okay, this is really very tough. But this separation from Ishmael, it represents the level of faith which, which we must surrender our own plans and power to submit before the great will of God. We must learn to deny ourselves. We humans often think we are good, we are right, and our ways are the best. But no, we must learn to deny ourselves and humble ourselves and listen to God. We must always check on ourselves if what we have done is according to God's will or according to our own way. We may carry out something thinking that, oh, this is good, this is to fulfill God's will. But that may not be in line with God's plan, just like Abraham and Sarah, using human thoughts to try to fulfill God's plan. We today must try to drive out the Ishmaels in our lives. We must deny of the things that we, have, we know have nothing to do with the will of God or that will hold us back from fulfilling God's plan even though that may be our love. We need to be in constant prayer to always check our actions with God and ask God's Spirit to fill us and guide us so that whatever we do and the fruit of our actions are all according to God's will and be pleasing in Him. Amen. Okay, now let's go to our last separation, the fourth separation. And this is separation from Isaac. You can see, the level of separation get tougher and tougher and really very tough. <laughs> okay, so after Abraham had driven Ishmael out, God commanded Abraham to offer up Isaac, his only son left, as a burnt offering. We have learned Abraham had two sons, Ishmael and Isaac. Okay, God had commanded Abraham to drive out Ishmael, right? So now one son is gone, left only Isaac. And then now God commanded him again to offer up the second one as a burnt offering. Oh no, if you are Abraham, how do you feel? Are you able to obey? As a parent, our heart aches so much, uh, even when our kid just got injured. Even one little toe bleed, the parent's heart Ate so much, you know. So can you all imagine Abraham's heart? He himself had to drive out the first son, Ishmael. Okay, then now he had to offer up the only son, Isaac, whom God had given to him. And we know offering up means he has to kill the son, right? In order to offer as a burnt offering. Well, this level is really the highest and it's akin to death. Right? By human strength, I believe none of us can ever overcome this separation. Okay? It is truly by the grace of God. Faith is a gift of God. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 to 10 says, For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So we can see, God had given Abraham the faith of the living that can overcome life and death. Abraham believed that God is in control of all. And God can raise his son back even after the offering, if it is in God's will. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 19 says, He considered that God was able even to raise him from the dead, from which, figuratively speaking, he did receive him back. Abraham received the apex of faith at last, and God said, For now I know that you fear God. Genesis chapter 22, verse 12 says this. He said, do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him. For now, I know that you fear God, seeing you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. God says to those who obey the command 
of separation, I know that you fear God. Because of Abraham's obedience, God gave him great blessing. And this is incredible blessing. This blessing crosses over the boundaries of human understanding. This great blessing was fulfilled when Jesus Christ came as the descendant of Abraham. And Abraham became the father of all nations. Imagine our God Almighty, the Lord who is over all universe and creation. He came on, on the earth and he is a descendant of Abraham. What greater blessing can there be? Right? So let us all pray for the grace of God to overflow in our lives and may we receive the faith like Abraham to have complete obedience to the word of God. When we obey the word of God and overcome the pains of separation like Abraham did, we too will receive great blessings from God. Just like in Genesis chapter 22, verse 15 to 18, it says, And the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time from heaven and said, By myself I have sworn, declares the Lord, because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son. I will surely bless you, and I will surely multiply your offspring as the stars of heaven and as the sand that is on the seashore. And your offspring shall possess the gate of his enemies. And in your offspring shall all the nations of the earth be blessed because you have obeyed my voice. So in conclusion, by the grace of God, Abraham was chosen and God gave him the faith of the living allowing him to overcome all the levels of separation. Today, we are also so blessed. We are also the chosen one by God, and we need to go through these four levels of separations. We must be separated from this world by adhering to the word of God to attain holiness. Remember, without holiness, no one can see the Lord. So we must come out of this world and live lives consecrated from this world. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14 to 17 tell, teaches us about the principles of holy consecration. Let me read for you. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14 to 17. Do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. For what punishment has righteousness with lawlessness? Or what fellowship has light with darkness? What accord has Christ with Belial? Or what portion does a believer share with an unbeliever? What agreement has the temple of God with idols? For we are the temple of the living God. As God said, I will make my dwelling among them and walk among them. And I will be their God and they shall be my people. Therefore, go out from their midst and be separate from them, says the Lord, and touch no unclean thing, then I will welcome you. So yes, we must be holy. We must be separated from Terah who delay God's will, as well as from the worldly greed which blinded Lot. Furthermore, we need to put aside what we cherish that has nothing to do with the will of God or will hinder our journey of faith, like Shemaiah. Last but not least, we must fully trust in God and be able to surrender what we cherish the most within the will of God and believe God has greater plans and provision for us. In this journey of obedience, it is not easy and one cannot advance one step without self-sacrificing, faithfulness and focusing our eye upon our Lord Jesus Christ each and every day. Reverend Abraham Park, the author of the History of Redemption series, he wrote this in the book. True faith is answering God's command with yes and amen, followed by action, even though his plan may not immediately be comprehensible. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20 says, For all the promises of God find their yes in him. That is why it is through him that we utter our Amen to God for his glory. In facing this separation, we need to remember by human strength and will, we cannot overcome these temptations, these separations. 
we men are weak and limited. It is truly by the grace of God that He gives us the faith that we need to overcome it. Thus, what we need to do is we need to keep praying, keep praying to seek God for His mercy, for His grace, and to pray for His Spirit to fill us and to give us the faith that we need to obey all His Word so that we can be set apart from this world. When we are able to fully obey His Word, what awaits us is blessing. Okay. We will become the source of blessing like Abraham. So let us all pray that God will be with us and God will strengthen our faith like Abraham and we can say yes and amen according to God's will. Amen. Let us all pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you. You are the God Almighty, the Lord over all universe and creation. We are so thankful and so blessed that God, you have chosen us, that Lord, we can be your children. In this journey to heaven, Lord, there are many separations that we need to do in our life to be holy, to meet with you. We are very weak, Lord, and we really need you, Father. We pray, Father, for your grace and your mercy to overflow in our life. Help us, just like how you helped Abraham to overcome these separations, so that, Lord, we can finish this journey on this world and that, Lord, we can enter the kingdom of heaven. We thank you so much, Lord. We pray all this in our dear Lord Jesus' name with full thanksgiving. Amen. Uh, let us end with the Lord's prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.